I'm ready. Well, my process for each painting is different. It kind of just depends. This one in particular needed to fit in my sister's home. She has a Southwest aesthetic, so it needed to make sense in her home. I also wanted it to be a cohesive addition to her collection. I wanted it to feel curated in such a way that it feels like it's part of a series. So what she does, she sends me inspiration pictures and then I pick the ones that speak to me and then I kind of just go from there, make it my own and make take my own interpretation of the image that I chose to work off. So this one, she has one very similar in her home. So I also took inspiration from that one that she has because I wanted it, like I said, to feel like it's part of a series. But it's funny because looking back, I'll show you right here, this I did in 2020. So it's cool to see the growth that I've had artistically in these past three years. I know this one that you see here, it's, it has a very illustrative vibe to it. And though it was intentional, the illustration vibe in this one was also intentional. There's still a growth in the sense that the skill is elevated and even the composition, I, I feel it's better executed here. The fact that this is a diptych, it's two separate panels, you know, panel one and panel two. I think that makes a piece more dynamic. This is not my first diptych. My first diptych I did of a cardinal for my aunt. I painted the cardinal in 2021. This was really fun to paint just because those flowers are fun, the design in the bird is very whimsical, and I think it's one of my better executed paintings. But I think as a diptych, this one works better because each panel is a separate painting and can work as a separate painting on its own. With the cardinal, you need both together for it to make sense, <laughs> otherwise it feels like something missing or something is missing or the, either the head or the tail. My favorite thing to paint, uh, I mean, I like to paint things that, you know, push the envelope, that are risky, maybe even a little, you know, a little or very vulgar, I don't know, I just, I like to provoke when people are looking at my art, but, but people don't want paintings of naked men in their homes. Why? I, I don't understand. Who doesn't want to see a chiseled man on their wall? And because that is not something that's very commercial, I do dabble a lot in, in different styles, different forms, and I take commissions for different things. I am personally enamored with the male anatomy and I think my favorite painting with this subject is this painting that I did of Luke Evans when he was in Nikonos. Growing up I remember going to like any clothing store and if they had an underwear section I would always go there because I would see you know these men with these perfectly chiseled abs and uh, great bodies and things like that so we were being fed this idea that that's the body you should have or that's the body that you should aspire to because that's the body that's showcased and the one that's deserves to be seen, you know? So I do like to paint the ideal male form, but I think representation is nice. I'm not there yet because I'm still infatuated with male perfection. And I think it's been imposed even before, I mean, forever. If you look back at like the Statue of David, that's a very, <laughs> very nice body, you know? So it, I mean, it's, I think it's rooted in my, I think it's very deeply rooted in, me this glorification of the male form and I think it would be fun to try to work outside of that so it would be nice to explore that but like I said most people don't want paintings of naked men in their house so next question oh I have several but I think my number well I don't know if I have a number one but it's Frida Kahlo, Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, Vincent Van Gogh, Keith Haring, Jean-Michel Basquiat I think those six influenced me the most and then the work of Frida Kahlo is, is so inspiring to me she was able to uh, give visible tangibility to all her pain and that to me is very brave I mean I don't know that I could give visible tangibility to the pain that I've experienced and I don't even think that I would want to I've already worked it out I'm in therapy I think the painting I did of Uriel I did that when I was in school in 2012, so 11 years old, and I look at it. To me, it's a very well-executed oil painting, you know, it has very unique tactile quality about it, just just because of, you know, the materials I use for the underlayer of it. And I'm looking that way because that's where it's hanging, but uh, I don't know, I just, I, I love how well-executed that is. For being one of my earlier paintings, like I said, it's 11 years old. I don't know, being in El Paso in that time, I, looking back now, it was like, one of the happiest time of one of the happiest times in my life, you know, was I had just come to terms with accepting me with who I am and who I was at that moment and everything that 
that entailed, you know, just when you decide, okay, this is me and we're going to go with it. Uh, so it reminds me of that. It also reminds me of what, you know, what he, Uriel meant to me at that time and what he means to me today. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very beautiful painting that represents a very beautiful time in my life. The hardest thing to paint for me are noses and I don't enjoy them at all. So when I was painting the Paola, I couldn't get the nose and I tried and I tried and I tried so I just ended up putting a flower, like she's smelling a flower, except she's not holding it which adds this whole element of surrealism which I enjoy. So I'm kind of glad I, did it. I couldn't do it because I, I like the end product. My favorite nose that I've done, and I think it's the one of my friend Romina, I think it's also a very beautiful painting. I love that nose and I also love the lips on that painting, very good painting. You know, there's certain pieces that I have that I will never sell, and the one of Uriel is one, this one of Romina is also one that I won't ever get rid of. My top three favorite paintings ever? That's a hard question because I think it changes, but I can tell you about three specific moments that I remember till this day just because of what I experienced in that moment. The first one was going to see Guernica by Pablo Picasso in the Reina Sofia Museum in Spain. Yes, a pintura impone. It's so big, and when you stand there and you look at the imagery and you think about what that meant for this that particular time in history, you know, this Spanish Civil War, the carnage, and all the devastation that that painting resembles, it's it's really, I don't know, it makes you feel really small. And then the second one was when I went to the Salvador Dali Museum in San Peter in San Petersburg, Florida, which has the largest Dali collection outside of the U.S. And when I was in there and just walking through and just seeing his works, for some reason, I was extremely turned on. And that was the first time that I, I had I ever been aroused by paintings, which is weird, but it makes sense. I remember running into old magazines of, you know, adult content, and those <laughs> cause arousal. But in this sense, it, they were paintings, and they were they were very sensual, and some of them were very suggestive. But it wasn't as obvious as something you would see in adult content, you know, magazines. That was a very strange <laughs> experience, you know, being in a museum with the heart on. <laughs> the third would be when I went to go see Starry Night by Van Gogh at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. That one was, was the first time that art has made me cry. And he painted that in 1889, just a year before his untimely passing. So if you know the story of Van Gogh, you almost, I don't know, I always feel like he just got a really bad hand dealt. So I've always felt like this, I don't know, I feel like Vincent is a kindred spirit. So when I saw that painting and I saw what that meant, you know, in 1889 when he was in the sanatorium and then, I don't know, it was just, I was over, overwhelmed with emotion and I, I, I cried. It was a beautiful moment and it's a beautiful painting and, um, yeah, I'm a huge Van Gogh fan and I hope somehow he knows everything that he has created, what it has come to be and all the people that he's touched. I don't know, even just thinking about it makes me feel like some kind of way. Um, but yeah, those three moments have really like left a, a significant impact in my life. So the one that was oh, underwhelming, that would be when I was in Paris, France at the Louvre, you know, and I've had known the Mona Lisa for years and, you know, read about her and you come to see her and she's behind the glass and she's, there's a rope and it's tiny and it's like, ah. Oh. For some reason I wasn't prepared for that and I wasn't expecting that. So that was and felt very underwhelming. What is the painting that I wish I would have painted? I think the Two Fridas by Frida Kahlo, it's an, an incredible work of art. And to me, it's a work about identity. And I can relate, you know, to like having issues with your identity or what you identify as or <laughs> what side of you is the one you choose to present to people versus the other one that you keep in the side. So if I were to recreate that, I think instead of two Ramones, there would have to be like three or five because there's there's definitely different sides of me that thankfully I've given myself the opportunity to, to explore. And here she is on my shirt. And she's tattooed on my back as well. So yeah, 
that's a great painting and I, I would at one day try to make my own interpretation of that and it would be interesting to see what that would look like and what parts I would choose to represent in those versions of myself. I do not like to paint people's pets at all. Actually, that's something I will not be doing any longer, but here's one that I did for my aunt. And even though I did not enjoy painting this and I did not enjoy having to work on it, I think it came out quite nicely. There's so many, I don't know, and my style is a little bit like my personality. There's so many sides to it. <laughs> but I think pop surrealism is a term that encompasses everything that does categorize my work, which is bold color. There's always a surrealist aspect of it. And I am very much a fan of the artistic pop culture, you know, with Andy Warhol and Keith Haring and Basquiat. And there is a heavy pop influence in my work. I have the painting of Belinda. She's, you know, part of Mexican pop culture. And that's what pop art was or is. It's just painting things that are popular in culture at that time. And I like this one right here. <laughs> I think we have now normalized of having adult toys, and if you don't, what are you waiting for? I think pop surrealism can be used to describe my work. I mean, I definitely do want to explore this whole series I'm doing with the suits and then the phallus, I think is an interesting concept, and I think it's interesting, like this one here, that we have a clear reference to the artist, Henry Matisse, and then towards you know the top you have the phallus, and I, I don't know, I just, I think it's it's an interesting concept and I, I would like to develop it even more and I would like to explore it even more. And I think I will continue doing portraits. I really enjoy painting people, especially people that are in my life and that I care about. I think it's easier to paint that versus someone I'm really not interested in. So that's when someone wants a portrait of themselves. I typically decline because if there's not an affection there, it's really hard to do. Am I finished with this painting though? No, I'm not finished. It still needs a lot of work. I love how it looks so far. I can't wait to see it in my sister's space. But yeah, that's kind of what my process is like.